oh my gosh, I have not filmed in a week or so. Um, it's been a poppin' week. I got back from Nashville this past week and my beautiful, my precious arrived and I, oh, you guys, I need to be a better YouTuber and I should have probably filmed on this during the week. I had good intentions, but time just got away from me, so I have the beautiful Midnight Sun palette here from Pat McGrath Labs, and this actually launched on the 6th of September when I was away in Nashville, and I was able to order it on the Pat McGrath website. I typically try to order from her site because she usually does a discount, and she has like some version of Afterpay, I think it's called like, I can't affirm, as I don't know, there's so many different like interest-free payment plans these days so I was like heck yeah um, I can pay it off in three payments of like 37 a month or something like that so I opted for that and I actually did receive it before it launched on Sephora so it was a win-win-win I think Pat McGrath has her launches down on her palettes it's just like her complexion product that was a huge fail for me. I didn't pay for expedited shipping this time because I decided to lower my expectations. That way I would be less upset and I was out of town anyway. So I'm really excited to play with this guy. I want to swatch it for you really quickly. I'm sure you guys have seen a million videos on this palette. I think I saw Kinky Sweat. Is that her channel name? Is Kinky Sweat. Um, and Mel Thompson do videos on this palette. A lot of people were kind of saying uh, mixed reviews, I think, because the special shades are not really in this palette, like the duochrome shades. So a lot of people were kind of upset about that, which I understand, um, because that is the best part of uh, Pat McGrath palettes sometimes. Now the shade names are in um, a piece of paper, so I'm gonna, hopefully I didn't mess this up, but it's Skin Show Moon Glow. Oh, Skin Show Moon Glow is the first shade. We have Bronze Eclipse. Uh, we have Vermilion Venom, Blood Moon 005, and Jubilee. So those are the first five shades in the palette. And I'm going to swatch the next five. There's like a, oh that's pretty, it looks like a cement brown almost, but... This palette does feel a little bit more boring when you look at it. I must say the promo photos definitely made it look a little more fun um, than it does in person. So. Here are the next five shades, and we have um, Extreme Dusk, Taboo, Wicked, Envy, Blitz Violet, Orchid, and Astral Solstice. So there are the shades. Yeah, it. I mean, okay, so here's the thing too. I usually buy all of Pat McGrath's big palettes. I have all of them. I collect them. Um, it's my sick obsession, and honestly, I have not been disappointed by one of her palettes. I really want to do like a ranking of her big palettes and I haven't been disappointed. I bought all the holiday mini palettes. I really like those ones um, because I thought the color schemes were really interesting. I didn't buy, I did buy one of her um, original mini palettes when she did like the bronze, the cool tone bronze and then the warm tone bronze and then that pinky palette. I bought the pinky palette. I didn't really think it was that satisfying so I returned that um, and then I just kind of stuck to buying her bigger palettes. Then she did those minis with Sephora in the white packaging and I actually was sick that day when they came out on the app so I didn't realize they were repeat shades and so I bought them right away and then when they came in I thought they were beautiful but I saw I think Morgan Turner um, she's a newer youtuber that I started following do a video where she did all the swatches and although they were really beautiful and I think they are smashingly good deal I just felt like those were gonna be palettes that ended up you know I'd use in a video and then I'd never touch again so I ended up not even opening them I just sent them right back to Sephora um, just because I didn't need to spend the money and all that jazz. So when this was announced, I was so excited because she hasn't done a big palette in some time. So it was nice to get excited about something again. But um, I can tell you just from the swatches, I was definitely more excited swatching her 
a Mothership 5 palette, Bronze Ambition, um, is a beautiful palette. And I was actually supposed to be working on a pan project on Pat McGrath um, with a few other ladies and we all I think totally fell off the wagon. I don't know if anyone is still working on panning their palettes. I think maybe a few um, but yeah anyway maybe that can be one of my goals for 2020. Anyway I went on a whole tangent just to say that this palette I think I was more excited because it was Pat McGrath but the palette I'm really excited for is the Metrop Met Met Metropolitan? Metro, Metropolitan? Or is it Metro... Metro Met, I can't remember. I think it's the Metropolitan palette by Natasha Denona. Oh my god. That palette looks so stunning. I've been watching so many videos on it. Swatches, reviews. It looks so beautiful. Those greens. Oh my god. So I'm on like a major budget honestly because I literally don't have extra money to spend on makeup this month. Um, we're going to, well I just went to Nashville last weekend and we'll be in Arizona this coming weekend and then I'll be in New York two weekends um, from then hanging out with Angie, going to Gen Live. Is that what it's called? I can't even remember. Anyway, so I have like a whole bunch of trips planned and so I'm like on a very tight budget and so I couldn't buy the palette, the Natasha Denona palette. If I had known the Natasha Denona palette was coming out, I might have actually held off on this Pat McGrath palette because that Natasha Denona palette I feel like is just like the epitome of fall and holiday for me. Um, so then I was lusting after it and lusting after it and lusting after it and then um, I just got so lucky and my husband decided to treat me to the Natasha Denona Metropolis palette. So I'm so excited because I waited and waited. I was just gonna do it. I was like fuck it. I'm just gonna order it and then I won't buy anything else the rest of the month. Um, but he was kind enough and bought it for me, which is sweet because he doesn't, he'll buy me stuff all the time. Um, generally, it's like when we go out to eat or date nights and stuff like that. Um, and my husband, when we first started dating, he would buy me makeup every once in a while. It was so special. So anything I get from him is like even more special that he, you know, put the money into it. And it is very expensive. So it's very, very sweet. But, you know, it's our... Uh, it's our three year anniversary coming up on September 24th, um, our wedding anniversary. So I feel like I can sort of justify his purchase, but very, very excited. So I was just blabbering for like an hour, um, but I'm gonna do my makeup. So I'm not even sure what kind of makeup look I'm gonna do. Oh my goodness. Um, I did want to switch up my eye primer. I'm gonna use the Urban Decay Primer Potion. Um, wanted to give a little break to the Makeup Revolution um, primer. Not that I'm going to use that up anytime either. There's just like so much product in there. Um, but I thought I'd try out the Urban Decay, um, the Urban Decay one because I hadn't used it in a while. And oh my god, so many beautiful shades. I think I'm going to be the Basic B and go into this rusty brown shade. I think that's just gonna be such a beautiful crease shade for my skin tone. Wow, that was really dusty. Like, do you see the kick up? Oh my gosh. I've never seen a Pat McGrath palette do that before. That was a lot of kick up. So I'm just blending that shade. I hope I'm not saying Natasha Denona. I feel like I've been talking about Natasha Denona so much that I'm saying Natasha Denona when I'm blending Pat McGrath shadows. There is some other color in this freaking brush. I'm so sorry. I should have cleaned it with Cinema Secret brush cleaner, but I was lazy. B, so. So, you guys, I can't remember if any of my subscribers are actually from Nashville, but... I had the best time in Nashville. So my friend Kelsey is getting married next weekend in Phoenix. And um, she decided to have her bachelorette party the same month as her wedding. Which is kind of insane if you've actually ever like planned a wedding before. It's kind of like 
this craziest thing. I can't believe it because I was like, you know, some brides really like go overboard too at their bachelorette parties. So I was like, so nervous. Like if somebody, you know, got hurt or, and especially because we were like out of town and like, you know, uh, people say like Nashville is like the, the Vegas of bachelorette parties now. Um, so I was very nervous, but once we got there, it was just like such a good group of girls. Um, it was like her childhood friends, her sister lives in Nashville, um, a lot of her college friends and her college friends. And it was just such a good group. And the drama was so like non-existent that it just was such a great trip. Cause I mean, I'm 30, so I feel like I've lived, you know, I've lived a pretty interesting life. And usually when there's that many women in one place, there's always going to be some bullshit happening. It's just, it's just, I mean, a numbers game, right? There's always going to be a drama. But everyone that, like, attended got along so well, and everyone just had such a good time. And it was, a, li you know, we did go out a couple of nights, but you know, people didn't stuck together, like we didn't lose anyone. Um, everyone kind of took care of themselves really well. So it was just a really nice experience and I haven't been on a girl's trip in so long, especially like one to a completely different state. Um, and I think a lot of us hadn't been to Nashville, so it was so much fun to experience the culture and the food was so good. And there were so many different fun restaurants and cuisines to try, which is like my favorite thing about going to a new place, honestly, is getting to experience the cultures and seeing new things that I never, you know, thought I'd see and um, experiencing the different food. So we had some good barbecue, we had some good ice cream, I had some bomb tacos um, from a place called Bar Taco. If you live in a state that has Bar Taco, I like officially hate you because we don't have like Mexican food options like that. So yeah, oh my gosh, it was so good and the um, party atmosphere was great, but like not like there weren't any creepers there Like it was so nice to go somewhere where we didn't know anyone and we just got to like live our best lives So I really really envy you if you live in Nashville. I think it's like such a great place I think it's like the perfect like big city, but still feels very small town there wasn't like a lot of traffic I didn't feel like and yeah, it was just great. So I got it you know, my friends that put that thing together, they did a fantastic job planning her bachelorette party. I think that um, she felt really special and I was just so happy to be a part of it. So that was really, really cool. Sorry, I went on a tangent. Okay, so I really want to use the purple and the green. I don't even know if these shades are going to go together. And I, oh wow. Okay, I want to put the purple on the inner corner. I don't know about this palette, you know? I This is why I don't like to watch reviews before I use a palette because it really does like influence how I feel about it. And so since I saw some people kind of just saying like, ah, this palette's like okay, now I'm like, oh, I can't believe I paid $125 for this thing, you know? Um, I kind of makes me sad now because I'm like, okay, yeah, it's beautiful, but I've seen Pat McGrath do better than this and especially because I can't stop comparing it to the Met Metropolis palette that Natasha Denona just came out with. Okay I had to get something to wet this little brush with um, to see if I can just not get any glitter flick fallout from this shadow but yeah Nashville was fun I'm so jelly uh, oh my god and the weather was so nice because it was like raining in Fargo the whole time I think that I was gone, it was just rain, rain, rain. Super miserable. We're like full-blown fall over here in North Dakota and and in Nashville. It was like sunny skies every day. Um, the hotel we stayed at was really, really nice. If you guys are planning a trip to Nashville, I would totally recommend the Holston House in Nashville. It's so close to Broadway which is where all the bars are, like the main row of bars. And the hotel is walking distance and 
Um, it has a rooftop pool with yummy food. So it was such a great spot. It was such a great pick for a bachelorette party because we could lounge at the pool at night or sorry, <laughs> during the day, like, you know, when we were kind of, um, waiting for evening time and dinner time so we could lounge at the pool and then we could, um, you know, get to the bars uh, without like Ubers and stuff. You could just, um, you know, hop in the, like you didn't have to really pay for Ubers because um, we could just walk to Broadway from um, our hotel and the pool was fabulous and, you know, service was great and then um, the Ubers and stuff were so affordable. Like nothing was like ridiculous. I don't think any of our Ubers were more than 20 bucks like everything was like seven dollars like I was like what like uber for seven dollars like is that even possible maybe it was like because the surcharges weren't bad but I was actually quite surprised at how affordable everything was as far as like getting around um and yeah so it was a really fun trip and so all I did was I put the purple and the green it's kind of a weird combination of colors um, and I'm using the Sonia G. This is their uh, Builder Pro brush. And I just want to tap on. I thought I was going to have to use glitter glue, but I think I'm okay. And then I'm just going to tap on this um, white shimmer shade. Um, it's basically just like a glitter topper. And I just wanted to add that just to see if it would do anything spectacular to the eye look. So that is pretty much my lid done so I'm gonna do my foundation and stuff off camera I think because I feel like I make videos so so long by doing a foundation routine as well and that's not really necessary although I do have the new Charlotte Tilbury foundation um, I did pick it up I think I have the wrong shade though so if you follow me on Instagram you saw me um, wear it I bought the shade like 910 and I think it's a little too light so I might just use a different foundation but um, I really like this eye look so far and once I get my foundation on, I will come back and finish this look. Would you guys believe me if I told you it's Sunday afternoon and I have nowhere to go after I film some of my YouTube videos for the week. I'm trying to pre-film and I feel so bougie because I put on these bougie earrings but I just felt like it. So all my makeup is on. I even have this lip which I'm living for. It's kind of messy, but it is Maybelline Raw Chocolate, which I heard Hannah Louise Poston talk about in a video a while ago, and I bought it, and I love it. It's such a beautiful nude. It has that warm nude shade. I love it. I love it. I love it so much. If you guys are tan and you're looking for a good drugstore nude bullet lipstick, Maybelline Raw Chocolate, and then I have the ColourPop Gloss, the lip gloss, the Juicy Lip, in just the clear shade on here. It's a little bit messy. I hate the packaging of the So Juicy because I feel like no matter how careful I am at squeezing the tube, way too much always comes out. So I feel like I have like way too much lip gloss on, uh, but that's okay. My lips do look juicy and delicious. So I love that. And then this highlight is the Anastasia Peach Fizz highlighter, which I've been obsessed with um, since I picked it up during the Sephora sale. And my bronzer is just the NARS bronzer. And my blush is uh, Becca Sweet Pea. I've had that one forever. So I just want to do my lower lash line. I am going to go into this matte shade quick with just this pencil brush and start placing that. This shade is so flipping pigmented. So you guys, I watch a lot of YouTube and I mean, I feel like I watch a lot of YouTube. I don't watch as much as most people do though because sometimes things happen in the beauty community and I'm like, what is going on? So I woke up today, it's Sunday like I said, and um, woke up to one of my first videos I usually watch on Sundays, Angelica's Will I Buy It series. Um, but I saw an upload from Rich Lux that said, I'm not a racist. So I'm like, what? So I watched it. I was like, oh, that's okay. Something dramatic must have happened. What's going on? Like, I have no idea, of course. And then I saw Jen Loves Reviews uh, live stream. I didn't catch it on the live, but I've been watching it in between getting ready. And it's honestly such a heavy topic. And I... I'm not the one to talk about 
um, racism because I feel like there's so many, so many sides to the story. Um, there's so many nuances. There's everyone sees it in such you know polarizing ways. Um, I experience it in a different sense because I'm not black but I'm a woman of color in America and I live in a predominantly Caucasian state. So um, I experience it in different ways. My husband experiences it and has experienced it in different ways because he um, grew up in South Africa and he is of like British descent. So there is racism in so many forms and it's just so it's such a big topic and it just sucks because I feel like I know it's important and we need to talk about it but honestly when you wake up on a Sunday morning and something so heavy is happening it just makes me so sad for like our little beauty community I, it really does I don't I honestly still don't think I really even know what's going on so I'm not even gonna comment or take sides or whatever but just watching you know Jen does such a good job she like is professional she's you know trying to bring awareness which I think is important I don't think I could handle a discussion like that on my channel because I would get so hurt I think by comments and things like that and you know I have my own biases and stuff like that but it's just so sad to see like the beauty community and just like people turning on content creators and just oh my god it's just I oh, it makes me sad and I think that's kind of why when things happen I almost like don't even want to talk about it on my channel because it's like nobody is ever like you're never gonna find everyone agreeing with you so there's always gonna be like XYZ you know opinions and I don't know I feel like it's like I don't know I know it's important that people talk about these things and things that are hard to talk about but sometimes I'm just like oh, I wish the beauty community could just keep it about the beauty community and about the makeup and doing the best they can and being the best person for themselves I don't know don't I'm I, I'm not trying to make this seem less serious but it's just it's just su such heavy stuff for Sunday morning is all I'm saying so I am like loving my makeup right now I totally forgot my eyelash curl over there so I'm gonna go grab it and we're gonna curl my lashes oh ooh, ooh, uh, uh, ooh, don't you just hate it when that happens this is why I don't wear lip gloss <laughs> um, and I will be right back. Oh wait, did I even tell you guys what I did? I just smoked that brown out in my lower <laughs> Failing as a beauty guru. This shade I started off with, added some of this on the outer corner and then hit it with this shade on the inner corner and then threw in some of this sparkly shade on the inner corner as well. That's what I did while I was rambling. Okay guys, mascara is on. We are ready to go. And this is the final look I created using the Pat McGrath. This is called Midnight Sun, right? I keep saying Midnight Sun and I don't even really know. You gotta love her packaging. Midnight Sun, yep, okay, cool. So. That is the palette I used, holy moly. Did I talk about this packaging? It's cute. It's very much like her um, bronze ambition packaging. I think it's the exact same girl. It's just like purple instead of red. But overall, my thoughts on the palette. Is this a banger palette? Um, I'm on the fence. I like it, I don't hate it. Is it my most favorite Pat McGrath palette? Uh, no because I do miss those special shades. That's kind of why I would reach for this palette and, pray, and pay the heavy price tag I pay for these palettes. So that is a little bit disappointing. Do I hate this eye look? Absolutely not. I love it. I feel like it's such a great uh, going out, kind of smoky, sultry eye look. It's not one I do very often. I'm always more like, ha, ah, color and bright greens and stuff like that. So this is kind of a great, um, palette for my collection because it's a little bit different. I think this is going to pair really well with some of the other palettes. Um, I think it's a fun palette. I don't love it. It's not like 10 out of 10. I would give it more of like a 7. I still love the formula, all of that stuff. I need to play with it some more. Of course, this was just a first impression. I've been saving this palette. I wanted to film this look. So I hope you guys enjoyed this mini little video and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next one so i will catch you soon bye guys